This video is for the Z transform, which is a mathematical tool that we use to analyze digital control systems. So as we talked about before, we're going to work with digital control systems, which is a controller with a digital computer in the loop. And as we said before, it often looks like this, where the digital computer replaces the cascade compensator. Before, that is in control systems, whenever we looked at controllers, they were analog systems. They had continuous inputs and outputs. And the stability and transient response of the resulting system was governed by the gain of the compensator. And now in digital control systems, we have to also consider the sampling rate because this significantly affects the system performance. So now the stability and transient response are also dependent on the sampling rate in addition to the gain. For example, this chart shows the output of a digital control system to a step input. And it's plotted for different values of the sampling period. So the light blue line is for the biggest sampling period and you can see it has a larger overshoot than the others and so that shows the uh, effect of or on the stability and the transient response of the sampling rate and then as the sampling rate decreases we end up with uh, a closer result to the original analog system so the analog system with an equivalent controller or compensator. The point being that whenever we're working with digital control systems we need to analyze the effect of the gain and also the effect of the sampling rate. And again we see this picture of the model for the sample and hold Whenever we have a digital system, we're going to be using a discrete value for a fixed amount of time. So we sample of that the value, so F, and then we hold it. And we end up with, for a zero order hold, this stair step approximation of our original function. And the transfer function of a zero order hold is given by this quotient, 1 minus e to the negative ts divided by s. So if you had a zero order hold in your system, then the resulting transfer function would include this quotient. So in order to work with discrete systems, we use the Z transform. And the reason for doing that is to work with this variable Z instead of the more cumbersome E to the TS. And so we substitute, make that substitution, and we end up with this definition for the Z transform. So our transformed function in the Z domain, F of Z, is equal to this summation. Summation of our uh, sample time function multiplied by Z to the negative K. So here's an example of the Z transform using this definition. We want to find the Z transform of a sampled unit ramp. So our sample time function, oops is f of kt is um, the product of k and t. So k here is the number of sampling periods from the start time, so we're keeping count of the samples we've taken, that's the number k, and capital T is our sampling period. So to find the z transform of this sampled time function, we use this definition. So f of z is equal to the summation f of kt, so that's k times t, and then z to the negative k, z to the negative k. So we can factor out this constant sampling period, we end up with that, and then this summation just written in a different form looks like this. So f of z is equal to this summation multiplied by the sampling period. Now we can get a form of this that is easier to work with, and to do that we will uh, find the difference between the product z, f of z, and f of z. So there it is written out. And here's z times f of z, 
and then minus f of z, and this is equivalent to z minus 1 times f of z, and that looks like what we see here, this summation. And then we use the identity that the quotient 1 over 1 minus z to the negative 1 is equal to this sum to simplify this. And we can say multiply top and bottom by z to get z over z minus 1. So z, t z minus 1 times f of z is equal to z over z minus 1. And then we go ahead and divide through by z minus 1 to get the final result, f of z is equal to t times z over z minus 1 squared. So that's the z transform of, the, of a sampled unit ramp. But instead of using the definition of the z transform, we can often use a table to perform this transform. So similar to where we had a Laplace, a table of Laplace transforms, here we have a table of z transforms. And so you can see the transform function in the z domain and the equivalent in the sampled time domain. And we can use a, the table to perform our transfer. So for example, we want to use partial fractional, we want to find the sampled time function of this function in the z domain. So that function was f of z and it was equal to 0.5z divided by z minus 0.5 times z minus 0.7 partial fraction expansion this is equal to a over z minus 0.5 plus b over z minus 0.7 alright so now to find out what a and b are we can start with a, multiply both sides by z minus 0.5 and that gives us, oh whoops I skipped a step. So whenever this is how we would have done it in the s domain but for the z domain if you look all of these functions have a z in the numerator and so we want to end up with something that's like az plus bz. So what we'll do, so f of z is going to be something a times z plus b times z over something because that's what all these look like. So what we do in the for the z transform is we'll first divide our function f of z by z so that later on after we found a and b then we can multiply everything out by z and we'll end up with things that look like what's in the z transform table so 0.5 over this is equal to a plus b All right. so multiplying everything by 0.5 or z minus 0.5 and then substituting z equals 0.5 we get a is equal to point oh, I'll write this out so a is equal to uh, Point 0.5 times z minus point 0.5 over z minus point 0.5 times z minus point 0.7 and that's equal to point 0.5 over z minus point 0.7 and we want to evaluate this at z equals point 0.5 so this is equal to point 0.5 over negative point 0.2 which is negative 2.5 and likewise to find b we multiply both sides by z minus 0.7 and then evaluate it at z equals 0.7. So we end up with that b is equal to 0.5 over z minus 0.5 evaluated at z equals 0.7, which is 0.5 over 0.2, which is 2.5. So f of z is equal to, now we, now we know a and b, and we can go ahead and multiply back through by z. So we have Two point, I'm sorry, negative 2.5 z divided by z minus 0.5 and then plus 2.5 z divided by z minus 0.7. All right. So we've done the partial fraction expansion in order to get this original function in terms of some simpler functions that are in our z transform table. So we have 2.5 z over z minus 
So 2.5, that's just going to be a scalar multiple of our sampled time function. So we want z over z minus 0 0.5. And in the table, we see something that looks like that. We have z over z minus this constant value. e to the negative at is a constant value. And the sample time function for that is e to the negative a times k times t. So it's this constant value um, raised to the k power. So what we end up with is that f k t, that's supposed to be a capital T, is equal to negative 2.5 and then uh, multiply by 0.5 to the k. And plus 2.5 times 0.7 raised to the k power. K. So that was our example of using this table to perf uh, perform the inverse Z transform of this function. Now the third way that we could perform uh, the Z transform instead of using the definition or a table would be to use MATLAB or Octave. Octave has, just like MATLAB, uh, Laplace and Z transforms. So here's code for Performing the Z transform in either Octave or MATLAB. Again, this is in the well. This is in the symbolic toolbox. So we define the symbolic variables n and t. The function f is so here we have the sample time ramp function n times t. And so this was our first example. And the Z transform of that is this, which we can make it look clearer. It's t times z over z minus one squared which is the same result whoops, that we got here, t times z over z minus 1 squared, using the definition of the z-transform. And then inverse z-transform, we have, uh, we define the symbolic variables z and k. Our function in the z-domain, 0.5 times z divided by, I'm sorry, yeah, divided by z minus 0.5 times z minus 0.7. So it's the same example here. And then inverse z transform gives us the sample time function f. This second argument is optional. It just tells you what your increment variable is, so k. And here's our result. And then we can use variable, variable precision arithmetic to get this in decimal form. So it looks more like what we ended up with here. So negative 2.5 times 0.5 to the k plus 2.5 times 0.7 to the k. So that's our mathematical tool, the Z-transform, for working with discrete controllers.